Table of Contents, New Brunswick All about New Brunswick, including St. John, with visiting and touring information, geography, history, attractions, and other points of interest. Dr. Sidney Socloth Dr. Sidney22 at gmail.com 2022 Narration by Dr. Sidney Socloth Zoe Phonemes and Nathan Coltov For a more complete discussion of YouTube navigation, please go to this video using the link here. Chapter 1 Introduction to New Brunswick In the eastern part of the North American continent, just to the west of Nova Scotia and east of Quebec, is the Canadian province of New Brunswick. New Brunswick, in French, Nouveau Brunswick, is one of Canada's three maritime provinces. Canada's maritime provinces are Newfoundland and Labrador. New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island and Nova Scotia. New Brunswick is bounded on the north by Quebec's Gaspé Peninsula and Chaloux Bay, and along the east coast by the Gulf of St. Lawrence and Northumberland Strait. The narrow isthmus of Chignecto connects New Brunswick to the Nova Scotia Peninsula in the southeast corner. New Brunswick is bounded on the south by the Bay of Fundy Coast which with a rise of 16 meters, 52 feet, has amongst the highest tides in the world. It is bounded on the west by the U.S. state of Maine. The population of New Brunswick is 794,000. The provincial capital is Fredericton, with a population of only 58,000, and St. John is the most populous city with 71,000. New Brunswick is the only constitutionally bilingual province, English and French, in Canada. The majority is English-speaking, but a large Francophone minority, 33%, chiefly of French-Canadian or Acadian origin. This is a New Brunswick license plate with both English and French. The province's name comes from the English and French partial transcription of the city of Brunswick, Braunschweig in German, in northern Germany, and the former duchy of the same name. Braunschweig was the ancestral home of the Hanoverian King George III of Great Britain. Chapter 2 Where is St. John? This shows the location of St. John near the Bay of Fundy. St. John, French, Ville de St. Jean, is the largest city in the province of New Brunswick and the first incorporated city in Canada. This is a map of St. John along the north shore of the Bay of Fundy at the mouth of the St. John River. This is a view of St. John. St. John began as a collection of small settlements known as the Loyalist City when many Loyalists fled the American colonies after the American Revolution. St. John is New Brunswick's largest city, with a population of 70,000 and is the only city located on the Bay of Fundy. The population of the metropolitan area is 130,000. Chapter 3 The History of Acadian New Brunswick 
The French founded their first successful colony in North America in 1605 at Port Royal, now called Annapolis Royal. Later the French named all their Atlantic possessions Sucadee, or Arcadia. These included Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, and parts of the state of Maine. The origin of the name Acadia is credited to the explorer Giovanni da Verrazzano, 1480-1527, who had the Greek term Arcadia, meaning land of beauty, written on the entire Atlantic coast north of Virginia on his 16th century map. This map shows some of Verrazzano's explorations of the East Coast in 1524. The name Arcadia, or Acadie was initially given by Verrazzano, to the entire coast from Virginia north to Canada. For more than 150 years, Acadia was a battlefield in the struggle between England and France. Today, Acadia refers to regions of Atlantic Canada with French roots, language, and culture. Port Royal fell to the English in 1613. In 1621 King James I of England granted the territory to Sir William Alexander, a Scottish poet. The territory was named Nova Scotia, Latin for New Scotland, for King James's native land. But that is not the end of the story. England and France contested the ownership of this land for many years to come. In 1632 Charles I, successor to James I, returned Acadia to France, and the French resettled Port Royal. In 1654, the British recaptured Acadia. In 1667, Acadia was returned to France. In 1690, British troops captured Port Royal and gained control of Acadia. In 1697, French rule over Acadia was restored once more. In 1710, the British took Port Royal for the last time and renamed it Annapolis Royal. Annapolis Royal honors Queen Anne, 1665 to 1714, and is formed through a mix of the former French name Port Royal and the combining of the Queen's name with that of Polis, the Greek word for city. Annapolis Royal served as the first capital of the colony of Nova Scotia from 1710 until the founding of Halifax in 1749. The British Army built Fort Anne to defend the colonial capital from seaward attacks. Today, much of the original earthen embankments and some original buildings of the military facility are preserved for tours by the public. In 1632, Charles I, successor to James I, returned Acadia to France, and the French resettled Port Royal in 1654. The British recaptured Acadia, but in 1667 it was returned to France. Again in 1690, British troops captured Port Royal and gained control of Acadia. But in 1697, French rule was restored once more. Finally, in 1710, the British took the settlement for the last time and renamed it Annapolis Royal. By the Treaty of Utrecht in 1713, Britain got all, all Nova Scotia or Acadie except Ile St. Jean, now Prince Edward Island, and Ile Royal. Now Cape Breton Island. Chapter 13 The Expulsion of the Acadians from Nova Scotia The Great Derangement Upheaval 
The great Dirinch Moon upheaval was the expulsion of the Acadians from Nova Scotia and the Afecanadian Maritime Provinces of New Brunswick. Prince Edward Island and part of the U.S. state of Maine. This occurred during the French and Indian War, part of the Seven Years' War in Europe, and was part of the British military campaign against New France. Approximately 11,500 Acadians were deported. Among the legends that permeate the provinces that the poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow told in his tale, Evangeline, an account of the deportation in 1755 of the French inhabitants by a fearful British governor. A statue honoring the fictional Acadian heroine marks the site of Grand Pre. The village from which some of the Acadians were expelled in the 1750s. Many deported Acadians resettled in the Bayou country of southern Louisiana, where the name Acadian was corrupted to Cajun. In 1717, France started constructing the mighty fortress of Louisbourg on Cape Breton Island. In 1749 Britain founded the city of Halifax and fortified it to offset this threat to its safety. The fortress of Louisbourg was captured by the British under General James Wolfe in 1758. By the Treaty of Paris in 1763, Cape Breton Island, with most of Canada, was ceded to Great Britain. Chapter 4 New Brunswick and St. John The next century brought a steady flow of settlers to the area as New Brunswick played a strategic role in the growth of the French fur trade. The 1713 Treaty of Utrecht ceded New France to England. However, the era of French control did not end until 1758, when the English General Monckton captured St. John. The United Kingdom Loyalist Migration to Canada Loyalists were American colonists who remained loyal to the Kingdom of Great Britain and the British monarchy during the American Revolutionary War. At the time, they were called Tories, Royalists, or King's Men. They were opposed by the Patriots, those who supported the Revolution. When their cause was defeated, about 20% of the Loyalists fled to other parts of the British Empire, in Britain or elsewhere in British North America especially East Ontario and New Brunswick where they were called United Empire Loyalists. The end of the American Revolution brought great hardships for colonists who fought on the British's side. Many fled to the North. And by the end of 1783, some 14,000 Loyalists had arrived at the St. John Harbour. In 1785, St. John became the first incorporated Canadian city. Approximately 10 to 15 percent of the American colonists left about 62,000 white loyalists, or about 2 percent of the total U.S. population of 3 million in 1783. Many of these later emigrants were motivated by the desire to take advantage of the British government's offer of free land. Still, many were disillusioned by the continuing hostility to Tories and eventually decided to leave the new republic. About 46,000 went to British North America present-day Canada. Of these, 34,000 went to Nova Scotia. 2,000 to Prince Edward Island and 10,000 to Ontario.
7,000 went to Great Britain and 9,000 to the Bahamas and British colonies in the Caribbean. Of the 46,000 who went to Canada, 10,000 went to the province of Quebec, especially the eastern townships of Quebec and modern-day Ontario. Following the American Revolution, approximately 60,000 United Empire Loyalists fled to British North America. About 14,000 refugee Loyalists from the newly created United States arrived on the St. John River in 1783. Influential Loyalists such as Harvard-educated Edward Winslow saw themselves as the natural leaders of their community and should be recognized for their rank, and their loyalty deserved special compensation. However, they were not appreciated by the pre-Loyalist population in Nova Scotia. Chapter 5 The Partition of Nova Scotia the 34,000 Loyalists who went to Nova Scotia were not well received by the Nova Scotians, primarily descendants of New Englanders who settled there before the Revolution. As a result, a new colony of New Brunswick, which was part of Nova Scotia until 1784, was created for the 14,000 Loyalists who had settled there. The British created the separate colony of New Brunswick in 1784 for Loyalists who settled in the western part of Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia was very full partitioned, and the colony of New Brunswick was created on August 16, 1784. C. Thomas Carlton was appointed Lieutenant Governor in 1784, and in 1785 a new assembly was established with the first elections. Also, Prince Edward Island became a separate colony in 1784. After several conferences, the Dominion of Canada was formed in 1867. Nova Scotia was one of the first four provinces. This shows the original four provinces of the Dominion of Canada, Ontario, Quebec, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. This again shows the original four provinces of the Dominion of Canada, Ontario, Quebec. New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. The next great wave of immigrants were the Irish, who fled poverty and persecution at home. Over 150,000 Irish arrived between the years 1815 and 1850. Among other nicknames, such as the Loyalist City and the Greatest Little City in the East, St. John, New Brunswick, also bills itself as Canada's most Irish city. When the province was named after the partition of Nova Scotia in 1784, William Knox, also of Irish descent, proposed that it be called New Ireland. Trade and industry grew. And in the 1820s, Canada's first chartered bank was established in St. John, and the city became a prominent financial centre. By 1850, the city ranked third worldwide as a wooden ship builder, and in 1871, St. John emerged as the leading industrial centre in Canada. By 1850, the city ranked third worldwide as a wooden shipbuilder, and in 1871, St. John emerged as the leading industrial center in Canada. St. John's economy suffered as steam engines replaced the old ships in 1867. St. John joined the Confederation of Canada, 
and the economy was dealt another hard blow, as the new government of Canada placed high tariffs on foreign goods. On June 20, 1877, a fire destroyed the city's south end. The fire raged for more than nine hours, destroying 1612 buildings and leaving 13,000 people homeless. The city replaced the damage with sturdier brick and stone buildings built in the ornate Victorian style. St. John became the leading industrial center of New Brunswick during the 19th century, fostering a shipbuilding trade that lasted until 2002. The 20th century has brought modest economic growth. St. John's strategic location proved valuable as a supply depot during the First and Second World Wars. Several industries began to locate in the city, including the pulp and paper industry. The native-born billionaire Casey Irving diversified his petroleum empire by acquiring and expanding the St. John shipbuilding facility. St. John now enjoys a solid economic base, various industrial centers, and a growing interest in high-tech markets. Chapter 6 The Bay of Fundy The Bay of Fundy has been designated a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve and is one of the top natural destinations in Canada. Its coast has been uniquely sculpted by the famous Fundy Tides, the highest tides in the world. The Bay of Fundy is a funnel-shaped bay between New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. The Bay of Fundy is home to the world's largest tidal variations. While the Earth's average height variation in sea level from tides is 3 feet, the water level here can be as much as 53 feet, 16 meters, eager than at low tide. Tides along the Atlantic coast are semi-diurnal, meaning there are two significant high tides every 24 hours. Along the Atlantic coast side outside of the Bay of Fundy, the tidal range is from 4 to 8 feet, 1 and 1 half to 2 and 1 half meters without much variation in the time of the high and low tides. So, why is there such a large variation in the tide inside the Bay of Fundy versus outside? It is because of the funnel shape and depth of the bay and a little physics. The liquid in a tank, or in this case, a basin, will flow back and forth in a characteristic oscillation period and, if conditions are right, will rhythmically slosh back and forth in essence. A standing wave develops. The natural period of oscillation in the Bay of Fundy is approximately 12 hours. About the same length of time for one tidal change, a high-low tide cycle. This coinciding of the tide cycle and the oscillation period of the bay resulted in the much larger tidal ranges observed in the bay versus what occurs outside the bay. The massive volume of tidal water flowing through the bay four times daily has created unique features such as the Old Sow Whirlpool, the largest whirlpool in the Western Hemisphere. The reversing falls as a series of rapids on the St. John River that reverse direction with each flood and ebb tide. The Hopewell Rocks are rocky islands at high tide, where you can walk the beach and explore these formations along with the many caves cut into the cliff walls at low tide. Chapter 7 The Reversing Falls in St. John, the Bay of Fundy meets the St. John River and creates the renowned Reversing Falls Rapids, one of the city's most popular attractions. The Reversing Falls are a series of rapids on the St. John River, located where the river runs through a narrow gorge before emptying into the Bay of Fundy. 
This is a view of the Reversing Falls looking north upstream with the Reversing Falls Bridge and the Reversing Falls Railway Bridge in the foreground. This is a video showing the Reversing Falls. These are the falls flowing inbound. The falls lack 38 minutes after the previous picture was taken. The falls are now flowing outbound. 15 minutes after the slack picture was taken and 53 minutes after the first of the series. Chapter 8 St. John Sites This is a map of St. John. This is the central area of St. John. This is again the central area of St. John. This shows the location of Market Square, the New Brunswick Museum, Brunswick Square, City Market, and the Jewish Historical Museum. These are all connected by the Pedway. 1. The Old City Market 1. The Old City Market is one of the few buildings that survived the Great Fire of 1877. The Old City Market is an entire city block in length and was constructed in 1876. Its interior is modeled after the inverted hull of a ship. The market houses a wide variety of local and imported delicacies. Seafood. Meat produce, and an array of crafts. This shows the city market and the market square. And in between is the climate-controlled walkway called the Pedway. 2. Trinity Anglican Cathedral 2. The Trinity Anglican Cathedral was built in 1792. Rebuilt in 1856, and rebuilt again in 1880, after the Great Fire. The sanctuary's famed treasure is the House of Hanover Royal Coat of Arms from the reign of King George I. 3. The Loyalist House 3. The Loyalist House, dating from 1810, is the oldest unchanged building in St. John. Once the home of a Loyalist family, this National Historic Site is now a museum featuring period furniture and antiques. 4. The Fort Howe Historic Site was built in 1777 and served as the harbor defense and city jail. The building itself is now closed. However, the rocky promontory in which it sits offers an excellent panoramic view of the city and harbor. 5. The New Brunswick Museum in Market Square 5. The New Brunswick Museum is a three-story exhibition facility featuring the natural history of the province. The museum contains a model of a full-size right whale, maritime and geological history displays, and an art gallery with local contemporary art. The New Brunswick Museum contains a model of a full-size right whale, maritime and geological history displays and an art gallery with local contemporary art. 5. The St. John Jewish Museum opened in 1986. The primary role of the museum is to collect, preserve and display the history of the Jewish community of St. John. In addition to exhibits, the museum also has a research library and archives. The St. John Jewish Historical Museum is at 29 Wellington Row. 6. 
The Reversing Falls is one of the most visited attractions of St. John. At low tide, the St. John River empties into the bay through a narrow rocky gorge in a series of rapids and whirlpools. The rising tide pushes on the river and slows the river current to a complete stop. As the tides continue to rise to levels higher than the river, the river's current reverses direction, causing the river to flow backward. This shows the location of the reversing falls. Seven. The Carlton Martello Tower was built to guard the harbor shipping approaches during the War of 1812. During World War II, the structure served as a military intelligence center. This shows the location of the Carlton Martello Tower. 8. The Cherry Brook Zoo is in the northern section of Rockwood Park. It is the only exotic animal zoo in Atlantic Canada and houses over 100 animals. Chapter 9 Outside St. John Beyond St. John St. Martin's, population 374, was founded in 1783 and became one of the busiest shipbuilding centers on the Atlantic coast in the 1800s. Now a quiet little fishing village 40 kilometers east of St. John. It is most noted for the seaside caves scooped out of the red sandstone cliffs by the fundy tides. Irving Nature Park is a 15-minute drive from St. John. The park is noted for its rugged, unspoiled coastal scenery and is typical of the ecosystem of the Bay of Fundy Coast. The Irving Nature Park offers a variety of hiking trails and bird watching opportunities. Fundy National Park is one and a half hours north of St. John. The Fundy National Park contains a variety of environments and landscapes, from deeply cut valleys and sloping cliffs to dense forests of maple yellow birch beech red spruce and balsam fir. The scenic rocky shoreline has been sculpted by the famous Fundy Tides. The biggest tidal change on the planet. The Fundy National Park offers several outdoor activities, including hiking, biking, and fishing. This is a view of the Fundy National Park. The Hopewell Rocks Provincial Park is located just to the north of Fundy National Park and is also known for its curious rock formations, sculpted by the Fundy Tides. The giant natural arches and mushroom-shaped pillars jutting up from the sea floor are known as the flower pots. Chapter 10 What time is it in St. John? Here are the Canadian summer time zones. New Brunswick is in the Atlantic time zone. One who ahead of Eastern time and few hours behind Greenwich Mean Time or UTC. Note that the province of Newfoundland and Labrador has Newfoundland Standard Time or NST which is one half and who ahead of Atlantic Standard Time. New Brunswick is in the Atlantic Time Zone. One hour ahead of Eastern Time and four hours behind Greenwich Mean Time or UTC. Note that the province of Newfoundland and Labrador has Newfoundland Standard Time or NST which is one half an hour ahead of AST. When it's 12 noon in New York, it is 1 p.m. in Halifax. Chapter 11 The Money of Canada 
Currency exchange rates can change daily. For the latest exchange rate, click on this icon. Currency exchange rates can change daily. For the latest exchange rate, click on this icon. One US dollar equals one Canadian dollar and 29 cents. One Canadian dollar equals 0.77 US dollars. Recommended videos, New Brunswick. Recommended video, Top 5 Things to Do in New Brunswick, Canada. Recommended video, Top 10 Best Tourist Places to Visit in St. John, New Brunswick. Recommended video, 33 Reasons to Love Fredericton, New Brunswick. Recommended video, Top 10 Best Tourist Places to Visit in Moncton, New Brunswick. The Maple Leaf Forever. Table of Contents, New Brunswick. Thanks for watching.